Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Stunners channel, my name is Shanks and for today's video we're gonna take a look into the Isengard faction and hopefully I will be able to cover everything and after watching this video you will be able to improve your gameplay. We're gonna start the game on the map for of Isen against the Hard Army as random because I want you guys to learn how to wall check after watching this video. For that reason we need to select our Urukai and go with the mouse on the minimap and actually start right clicking. You can see our mouse is jumping, right? And we know that in this case we are against a good faction. Against a good faction you want to start with either one Uruk pit in a furnace or only with one Uruk pit. If you start with Uruk pit in the furnace you won't be able to get both the mills on, you know, purchased at the same time. For that reason we're gonna only start with one Uruk pit and use the Urukai to get our mills. Very important. And we have to get another Urukai on the field as soon as possible, because against good factions as evil factions in the beginning of the game, you need to play a little bit more defensively. Even though we are not against a real player, but I wanted to play against a bot, this way I can actually ex explain you guys how to um, build in you know, different matchups. We are now moving with the first Urukai through the bottom side in order to catch the enemy units, because normally they would be sending the units either from the bottom side or from the middle side. For uh, the second Urukai now, we can use them to check the middle. And you want to be able to catch the enemy units before they reach your side of the map, because Urukai, if you don't know, are the strongest and the fastest swordsmen in the game. With that being said, you will be always able to catch your opponent. And our wall check was right, and we are against E. Gonzo. We're gonna actually keep harassing him now because he's not going for the attack. We will now be able to see the soldiers. What we can do in a situation like this, we can now group our Urukai like this and use the war chant on them. Uh, we don't need two against a one because Urukai, once again, they are already the strongest swordsmen in the game. And when you are fighting, always use block formation, guys, because that's gonna make you lose movement speed, but it's absolutely fine. Get some more Urukai on the field and furnaces are your main resource building. And again, use always um, the block formation. Again, losing movement speed when you are standing is not a big deal. If you are getting attacked like this, you can always go around the building and that's gonna make them follow you. And if they chase you like this now, you can re-engage on them and actually catch them. Running away against the Urukai is not a option. Don't cash load too much, build furnaces. Uh, furnaces are gonna give us the steel bonus we're gonna need in order to be able to purchase the upgrades later on cheaper. We will be now easily able to destroy this uh, farm and now we can use this to Urukai because we are not getting attack rights now, we have still some time to build up. We can use this Urukai to creep one of the war clans and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that, alright? And again, make more Urukai because normally the Gonzo player would be getting some... Um, bit. We need to go around once again. Normally the Gonzo player, if he would be a normal player, would be getting some Gondo Knights on the field and for that reason we need the Uruk pet to be level 2. To be able to recruit some pikemen is a counter unit to the enemy cavalry units, right? Very important. We were able to destroy the farm, so the goal is kinda accomplished. We will also be able to kill those Gonda archers. Again, no one can match the mighty Urukai in a medium fight like this. And archers are very, very vulnerable, as we guys know. When it comes to creep, uh, we won't be able to creep this entirely. But what we can do is we can kill the layer and also purchase the money right after. We could be creeping this now entirely with the war chant. But I want to show you guys how to creep that with two Urukai by not using the war chant. We're gonna use one of the Urukai now to lure the works away from the lair. And as they're following now the one Urukai battalion around this side, now we need to stop and fight them. We want to keep them around this side as long as possible. We have so much money now, normally you don't want to cash load that much, but I wanted to get lures on the field. Which is not very necessary in this matchup. Because in this matchup normally you want to you know, spam a lot of pikemen on the field. In order to be able, oh, this is not gonna work out very nice, I guess. We can also use the war chant if we need to, uh, in order to be able to creep this. Make more Urukai. Maybe we can still do it if you are lucky. Let's see. It's gonna be close. I don't want to use my um, war chant for that. But we were able to do that. Just get the money, and then uh, we can't run away from them. They're gonna be faster than us, so we can just, you know, accept or lose, I guess. Lourdes can be used, um, it's very effective against Rohan, not that effective against Gonzo. It's an anti-hero, you will need him potentially in every single matchup when you are playing against either Gonzo or Rohan. In order to have a counter-hero to deal with the enemy heroes like, for example, Theodin if you are playing against Rohan, or Gunzov if you are playing against Gonzo. Because his cripple ability can pin down a hero, 
for multiple seconds that again can give you the chance you you know the time you need um oh he's gonna steal my creep are you kidding me all right all right that's mean that's mean <laughs> make one more rurukai our lords can now just level up for free in the middle of the map and our base is looking good and the last spot in your base you want to always save for the harmony guys and again look at this we have six furnaces that means we have the steel bonus which is going to reduce the cost of our upgrades by 40 percent which is quite a lot okay um, again normally your meals they wouldn't they would be attacking your meals 24 7 so your resources wouldn't be that great but you would also not be going for lords and you would just spam a lot of pikemen and once you have enough pikemen against gondo on the field this matchup is nice for isengard so isengard against gondo is a nice matchup for isengard uh, isengard against rohan is kind of more difficult definitely for isengard by the way and isengard against mordor is horrible for isengard Mordo, if he knows what he's doing on this map, or in any map against Isengard, he can dominate you big time. Lurtz is level 3 now, which is nice. A bunch of units. And now we can use um, Rallying Call, I mean, not Rallying Call, Warchan, sorry, on these units. Uh, kill this from this distance. And once Lurtz is level 5, he's gonna unlock his leadership, which is gonna make our units, or, you know, around him way, way stronger. Use Carnage to be able to kill them, just like that. Lord is one-shotting the soldiers, not a big deal. Now we can use the war chants right there and split them. One of them can go around this side and now try to achieve as much as you possibly can, alright? Let's go. And once again in this situation, with the war chanted Urukai, ignore the works and just try to kill the Leia instead. In this situation, this, you know, I think the Gonda player was already able to creep this. Lord is gonna be able to kill this farm, not a big deal. Armory is on the field. You want to purchase all the upgrades against Gondor, very important. Also, the blades. In some situations, you can also skip the fire arrow for the first part, but you might need them later on. So, I'm a fan. If you have it on the field, just get all the upgrades purchased and you are done with that, you know? Alright, Lourdes. Oh, I was not paying attention. Lourdes has to run for his life. We have now two power points collected, uh, which you want to always invest again, you know, into the industry. And use it on three furnaces at the same time. Against Gonzo, in some situations, it's also not bad if you skip the industry and go for the three power points instead in order to have the tinted land. We have something to cover the Elven Wood. The Gondor player would normally be spamming against you. Elven Wood is a great counter uh, to Isengard's Warchant because Warchant is a buff which can get negated by the Elven Wood easily. I mean, we are getting outspammed big time at this point and we can't win these fights anymore. We are just gonna play it slow. Make some towers. Uh, we can also get some war riders on the field just you know to show you guys, but normally you don't need them. You might need them against Rohan because he might get peasants on the field to deal with your pikemen. As you know, pikemen are weak against swordmen. And in order to kill the enemy uh, peasants from Rohan, you might need some works in the matchup against Rohan. But against Gonzo, you don't need them. You can spam just pikemen because normally the Gonzo player would be just getting you know, a bunch of uh, Gondo knights on the field and doesn't spam archers like the heart army does in this case all right all right all the upgrades purchased demolish this right after you don't need to keep the armory in order to keep the upgrades we're gonna now go for the work pit and make some combos now isengard is the only faction that is able to combine the urukai with the pikemen there is not a single faction that can do that not gondor not rohan not mordor they can't do that they can only combine swordsmen with archers that's it Keep that in mind, in some situations they are very useful when it comes to rush the enemy base against the evil faction, for example. Be careful, we have to get some more towers on the field, there are just too many archers, as you can see. He's chasing us down, which is not bad, because we can drag him inside the base. Lord is popping off, we can use Carnage, which is not only, you know, making us deal 100% more damage, but also increasing our armor by 20%. Alright, Urukai on the fields now, we can, as mentioned before, combine them. That's gonna. That's a down. There is a downside and an upside from this. If you con combine them, you're gonna lose movement speed, and you have not the chance anymore to switch to the block formation with the Urukai. On the bright side, however, you will have tanky units in the front line. So if, for example, the archers are gonna target you, they gonna they have to kill the Urukai first. And Urukai are very very tanky units. During all this time, the crossbowmen in the backside of the of the combat battalion can actually deal damage for free. All right, very important. Okay, so we have now Lourdes almost level 5 and once again this is gonna be a huge power spike. We have now Work Pit, we can get some works and buy all the upgrades on this unit beside the Blades. We don't need Blades, 
if the enemy doesn't have cavalry units on the field because blitz is not going to add anything since the urukai are just being the tanks in this the battalion they get, don't even get the chance to attack one time they are just a frontliner uh, of the combo battalion all right so now we have fire upgrade purchase on these units heavy armor coming up next and lords is going to be level five very soon that's going to make him really really strong uh, War Riders are the cavalry units from the Isengard faction and they are quite unique in compared to Rohirrim, Rohirrim archers but also the Gondor Knights from the Gondor faction because they have a buff in their kit, the whole ability, which is gonna make them deal 60% more damage. This combined with the War Chant can make them really 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 strong and when it comes to kill for example the Gondor Knights from the enemy player in this case but he is not getting any Gondor Knights on the field unfortunately, you can always use the Vision of Palantir. Because Vision of Palantir doesn't only give you vision control, guys. It also gives you movement speed bonus to your uh, units, heroes, but also to the siege weapons. So if you use it on your war riders, you will be outrunning the enemy Gondor Knights slash Rohirrim from the Rohan faction. And you will be easily able to catch them and kill them. Okay? We're gonna use, we're gonna get all the upgrades we need and now keep moving forward. We can now kill this and use industry once again if it's available. And once again, you have to select three furnaces. You don't you want to use it on this side because only we have, you know, on this side we have only two furnaces as you can see. The second one is also on the field. Don't group with them all the time. Uh, select different groups and try to be active in the entire map. You can make two, three armies and actually be all around the map. Very important to be, you know, active macro-wise in Battle for Middle Earth games. In order to be able to win the, win the game. Map control fights, they are very important. I mean, don't leave a money on the ground like I did. <laughs> Because money is always nice, even though we have no money problems now. I'm not gonna get any more work riders, so I can just demolish now my uh, work pit because we don't need that anymore. We can build another furnace here. Because when it comes to the siege in this matchup, you want you don't want to siege from your base, you want to siege from one of the outposts. In in this case, we have two outposts on the map for Survivor, one of them is at the bottom left side, and one of them is at the top right side. Okay, we kill all the units, use the work riders, we're gonna make some more furnaces because I actually want to siege from this area. Oh, there are too many units now. Lords is level 5, we have leadership, tower guards are coming, but kill the rangers first. I actually kill the tower guards first because for the, for the rangers, we can maybe bring uh, our uh, war riders to deal with them. Use carnage. Alright, beautiful. Kill, the, kill all of them. There we go. And when it comes to get in safety, you can always select the hero and put them in, inside the citadel, as we're gonna do now. This way, uh, our hero is going to be untargetable, alright? Which is very important. Our war riders are coming to save the day. And we have to... We're going to... I mean, I'm going to, for example, now go actually for Saruman first. Trample down this war riders, not a big deal. I mean, this... Uh, rangers, sorry. We are not using the whole ability because we don't need it. And by the way, unlike Gondor Knights and Rohirrim, war riders are pretty vulnerable against fire. And the battle formation is also really different. It's gonna make you tankier, you're gonna lose a lot of damage, but that's fine. Because the whole ability is actually making it up again by adding 60% to the table. And also, this battle formation is gonna increase your experience gain. So by using this battle formation, you are gonna be able to level up faster. Which is actually quite nice, when you are, for example, about to get a last hit with your war riders against a hero, against a building. You can switch to this formation in the last possible second, in order to get more experience. Okay, we're gonna make some more units now, more uh, combos. Beautiful. And there is a, one more left, so we need to kill him. And we're gonna use this outpost now, but first of all, let's grab the money to make the siege works. When it comes to build the siege works, I would always recommend you guys to build it in the backside of your outpost, which is gonna make it harder for your opponent to get through the site and actually target that. He will try to kill your siege works, he will try to kill your Urukpe, that's why you wanna keep these buildings protected all the time. When it comes to the power points now, if you are running out of money and you have no more money left, you can always go for the Devastation, which is going to give you a great chunk of money, around 2000 resources if you use it nicely. But normally in this matchup against Gondor, you want to get the Field of Fires unlocked, okay? For that, we have to either go for the Tainted Land, because we can't move to the Field of Fires, as you can see, uh, from the industry, right? So we have to get either Devastation or Tainted Land. I'm going to actually choose Tainted Land because it costs us one power point less. And Devastation is not needed right now because we have enough money. All ability plus Warchan is able to stack. That's gonna make our Warcry this really tanky but also really strong at the same time. When it comes to the Siege Weapons, 
Uh, the easiest way to break the wall from a safe distance are the baristas. And once your siege works is level 2, you will also be able to recruit some of the explosive mines, which are pretty unique. I, we can't keep this outpost alive. This death, uh, forge plates are gonna kill everything in a couple of seconds, but that's fine, alright? So let's group them once again. And I'm gonna show you actually one more thing, guys, which is very important. Maybe you can use it also in your next game. And that's the speechcraft ability from uh, Saruman. It depends on the unit you are using it on, how much experience the unit actually gains. And I will try to explain you what I mean with that. So let's use industry one more time. Now our furnaces are level 3, guys. They are very tanky. They have now 6,500 HP. I mean, the tankiest production build, uh, resource buildings in the game alongside with the blacksmiths level 3. I mean, they are leveling up to level 3 way, way faster than the blacksmiths from the Gondor faction. This lot of house is going to be demolished from our side. When you demolish the buildings in time, your opponent is not able to get any experience or power points. So it's very important to demolish, especially, in, you know, buildings like towers. They give so much experience and power points. That's why you need to demolish them in time. All right, back to Saruman, Speechcraft. You're gonna now use it on both the Urukai but also crossbow man. And now watch watch what's gonna happen, guys. As you can see, the Urukai are able to level up to level two, but the crossbow men don't. But if I combine them now, they are both level two, as you can see. And this way, you can save money, which is pretty nice. Okay, now we have to move downstairs, though, because we are gonna potentially lose this area. Actually, not. There are only some. Uh, you know, some rangers. We can kill them before the tower guards arrive. One of the work battalions is down, but I think it's fine. We don't need them anymore because we're gonna go for a siege very, very soon. Actually, they are quite tanky. Maybe it's because we are using the normal formation. I mean, the, the line formation. The skirmish formation is gonna make us deal 50% more damage. Don't underestimate that. Okay, now we have the strong army here. Lords can now get out from the Zitter once again. And he can also support now the army with additional 60% damage leadership. Which can stack with the leadership from Saruman. It's only armor and combat experience, but also with the leadership from the Warchant. Unlike in BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King, in BFME 1 every unique leadership is able to stack. So in this case, for example, you could have Eye of Sauron, Drama Troll and whatever combined and every one of them would be stacking with each other. This, can, this means you can make your units actually really, really, really strong, okay? Let's get an explosive mine, shall we? And explosive mines are very unique because they are dealing magic damage. And uh, by the way, three of these are able to one-shot a Balrog. Just like that, okay? Very important. Sometimes you are able to sneak some of the mine shafts. And they are also with friendly fire. So you can actually end up killing your own base with them and also the base from your ally. <laughs> if you want to, of course. I'm not too much worried about this side, guys, because, you know, Furnace is level 3, his towers all around the place. The Gondor player has no siege weapons on the field just yet. And everything is gonna be killed. Make sure that Lourdes is a little bit closer to the army. This way he supports them with leadership. Saruman can also join the party. Uh, Alright, so everything is getting killed in a second. If Saruman is nearby, your units are gonna level up twice as fast because of 100% combat experience. Which is quite effective. Okay. And now we have an explosive mine. Uh, somewhere, I guess. I don't see it though. Uh, maybe I didn't recruit one. I can't tell. And there is one trick. Uh, there, is, there it is. Uh, the, the thing with the explosive mines, guys, is just, you know, take a look into the current command points, please. The mine itself costs you uh, four command points, but if we actually place the mine, we have 197 command points. We're gonna get the command points back, okay? So pl uh, place it right there, for example. And you can see, we got four command points back. Oh, they are not able to attack, we need to be careful. Always turn your front side to the enemy units, this way they are not killing your archers, but trying to kill your, you know, Urukai instead. That's the way you want to position them, very, very important. And this mine can now be, boom, you know, can now be exploded from everything which has fire including the fireball ability from Saruman, but also from the enemy units. So sometimes you need to be careful, because if you don't pay attention, thanks to all the follows guys on the Twitch. By the way, you should also check me out on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash beyondstandards. The link for that is in the description down below. So we're gonna now try to you know, break the wall uh, from the Gondor, uh, Gondor player space, which should be quite easy with the explosive mine. You can one-shot the wall from Gondor if he has not the upgrades from the Stormworker. The Monorian Stormwork can actually make the tower, uh, make the wall quite resistant, in, in order to be able to actually make it 
gonna break it, you will need two mains instead of one. But every other wall, the normal wall from Gonzo without the upgrades, but also the Rohan wall can just get one shotted easily. Alright, use the fireball from Saruman to kill one of the trebuchets to combos for the next one. There we go. Fireball is gonna be able to one shot that. Now we are going to place this explosive mine right there, okay? Before he kills us. And watch now, guys. Watch now, please. Watch now. Bam. Just like that. And let's now commit inside the base. Oh, we lost Saruman some for somehow. I don't even know. I didn't even pay attention, guys. My bad. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> Alright, now we can also go for a field of fires, which is gonna increase the resource income from our lumber meals by 100 percent That's the double. And the enemy has so much units. So many units on the field. That's crazy. So we have to definitely get some more units. It's it looks like we won't be able to finish now. Combos are strong, but they are very immobile, you know, in compared to the rangers, and he has a bunch of rangers on the field. Kind of hard right now, but we were able to break the wall, which was our goal. We can now keep fighting a little bit. This unit will be respawning over time. Every time when we are low, we can always retreat. For our ballistas. Ballistas can also be effective against this units. Just keep running now, Lords and the army from Isengard. The White Hand of Saruman. Okay, industry is back up. We can use it one more time, just like that. Beautiful. More and more money. Uh, I mean, we have enough money now, but still, you know, Isengard gets a lot of money, but also on the other side, you will need money because your units are expensive, your upgrades are really expensive, and you will keep losing units, making units, so you will need a bunch of money with Isengard. Very important. Uh, target the rangers with the ballistas. Ballistas are not the best siege weapons against units, but they are still not bad. In compared to catapults from the Moral Faction or the trebuchets from the Gondor Faction, ballistas are dealing way less damage to the enemy units. And also less area damage. But they are still one-shotting them, which is quite nice. So we can now combine more units. And by recovering over time, you can actually extend your command point limit as well, if you don't know. So if you now get more units on the field, uh, around 400 command points, so when we are going to be kept, but we still keep making units, uh, the units which are going to respawn over time, in this case, for example, this battalion, can actually extend your command point limit. This way you can have more units than you normally are allowed to. Let's kill these units here. For some reason it feels like they are outranging my towers. It's kinda insane. Look at the, the lumber mills now, as you can see, are glowing because of the field of fires. And the next uh, the next power point from the spellbook is always going to be the Balrog from Moria, alright? I mean, you know that Balrog all alone is able to kill, you know, to kill the entire base. But in this game we want to try to kill the enemy base without, use, without the use of Balrog. We were able to break the wall, now we can go inside with a massive army, just waiting for Saruman, he's now back in the business. There we go. Group all of them together at one spot and use speechcraft on every single one of them. Just like that, beautiful. We have one more, we can combine them as well. We have now a bunch of units on the field, Isengard, but also Mordor, they are always starting with 400 command points in a one-on-one. -on -one. In good factions like Gondor or Rohan, are always starting with, one and, uh, with 200 command points. Um, which, that is not, you know, oh, Cloud Break. By the way, Saruman also gives you fear resistance, yeah. So when Saruman is around, your units are not gonna be stunned from Cloud Break or Horn of Gondor or Elendil from Aragorn, you know, they won't get affected. But they won't get affected anyway once they are level 2. The stunning abilities in uh, BFME 1 are not that impactful, unlike in Rise of the Witch King or BFME 2. Okay, Cloud Break is on cooldown. On top of the stun, Cloud Break is also able to reduce our, uh, redu reduce the armor of our units. So keep that in mind. Our units are going to be now slightly slightly weaker. Use this. We are not automatically attacking. You can kill them just like that. They have no upgrades. They have no chance. And as Isengard, we have also you know the least heroes. That you know you can also only purchase these two heroes, Lords and Saruman. That's it. But every single one of these two is so effective. I saw some trebuchets, right? There is a trebuchet. We have to kill it now. Hopefully, he won't have many trebuchets inside the base. Anyways, you can also build slaughterhouses if you want to, as a settlement around this area. Industry is almost wake up, and again, use it every time when it's up. It's gonna give you money, 100% uh, more money from every single furnace. So 100, 100, 100. That's 300 in my book. Big math. Group every single one of them to be able to watch on every single one of them. Uh, Saruman should also be joining the party. We are using the warchant a little bit too early, but it's fine. And now we are gonna try to go inside the base from our opponent. 
and actually try to focus down the buildings exclusively, all right? He, has not, he was not able to repair the wall because he has to invest 2,000 for each wall you want to repair um, and just focus the buildings. We have so much devastation power now. Closing the gate doesn't help you, my friend, because your, you know, your gate is broken. I mean, your wall is broken. Kill the Zitter first. You can, you can also use some abilities with Saruman. But be careful to not lose your heroes. Uh, there is a trebuchet. No, the trebuchets are gone. There are some arches we can use fireball on now. That's gonna be able to one-shot them. You will see now. Watch. There we go. And they are clumped like this because remember, the fireball ability from Saruman has like a splash damage. Also, bottom you got killed. I was not even paying attention. The reason why we are getting money now from killing enemy units is because of the pillage ability from Lourdes. Once he's level six, he's gonna have to pillage. Means more money every time when we kill the enemy units, right? Let's check if the Gondo player was able to purchase this. We can also check that like this. Look, I'm going to show you guys something. Because Tainted Land is one of the abilities you can use even when you have no vision. You can use Tainted Land right there. And if you want to check, for example, if the enemy has a settlement or not, we can check with the Tainted Land. And if, if you are not able to use it, like in this case, for example, we know that there is a farm. I'm not able to use my Tainted Land here. And this way we know that there is an outpost, even though we don't see it. So some, some tips and tricks about... Um, this as well. Beautiful. Okay, I mean, Isengard is pretty straightforward. You have not too many units on the field. The base is now broken. We can. We have so much money at this point. We can just buy the space back. If your if your units are damaged like this, you can always send them to one corner, and they're gonna respawn over time. There is no reason of you you know losing a full upgraded combat battalion. Again, just count how much money you need to spend to actually get them on the field. Two hundred for the Urukai, four hundred for the crossbowmen. It's only six hundred for the units. And then you also have to purchase with them the heavy armor, the forge blades, and every single one of these upgrades besides the banner carrier costs you 480. So one combo battalion from Isengard is quite expensive. That's why losing them for no reason is not necessary. Our work riders are dead. Talking about losing, <laughs> I was not paying attention. And once again, we know that there is an outpost. Otherwise, we wouldn't be we would be able to use the tainted land, and otherwise the opponent would be defeated after killing his main castle. For one second. My bad. And once again, we can group with all of our units and use the speechcraft whenever it's available to get free experience. Free experience is always nice. And again, build furnaces. You don't need slaughterhouses. It's gonna only make your work riders cheaper a little bit, but they are way squishier than your furnaces. And also furnaces are generally, you know, looking better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, use Speechcraft. And let me know, guys, in the comment section below what you want to see next. Maybe Mordor, maybe Rohan. Um, hopefully, I will be able to help you out a little bit and, you know, help you out to get a better Isengard player after watching this video. That's my entire goal. Beautiful. You can use the Vision of Palantir now to scout this area. There is double Siege Warwicks, a Archer range, and Boromir, the protector of the White City, is on the field. I mean, we didn't give too much time to our opponent. This, this is the reason why he was not able to get Gandalf on the field just yet. We could be fighting for the map control because, you know, normally I wouldn't let my opponent have like level 3 farms like this. But look at look our money, guys. We have over 30,000. Cloudbreak is being used, but it's not doing much besides slowing down our units a little bit. But that's absolutely fine. Let's make them shine bright like a diamond, shall we? The Warchan is being used. Look how they are shining. The Isengard units, mighty, the strongest infantry units in the game, definitely. The Isengard army is based on that. Mobile, fast, oh, it's attacking our Saruman. How oh, dare you, we can also use Tainted Land if you want to. It's gonna even give us more armor, plus 64 killing Boromir, plus 64 killing his brother, Faramir. In BFME 1, on the patch 1.06, there was an Isengard gameplay as we're gonna finish off this game. And hope, hopefully it was enjoyable for you guys to watch. And I would be happy if you guys leave a like on these videos because likes are helping me out big time. And maybe, and hopefully we can get 150 likes on this video. Alright, Hard Army has been defeated and that was the part of Isengard's guide. And again, your build order is depending on the matchup. I mean, normally you would play Isengard most of the time against good factions like Gondor or Rohan. And once again, Gondor is a good matchup for Isengard. It's winnable definitely. Rohan is a little bit harder. The reason for that is he will have mobile units, Rohirrim, Rohirrim, Arches combination, which is going to make your pikemen spam kind of more difficult. Against Gondor, you can only spam pikemen and win the game with pikemen all alone because he will be sticking up to Gondor knights and heroes most of the time. And against Mordor, 
I mean, against Mori, it's really tough. Like, if the Mori player knows what he's doing, guys, you have no chance. If you don't win the game in the first 10 minutes as Eisen get against Moro, you can't win, the, win this you know, game anymore. He will spam lots of orcs on your face with like four orc pets, and you will have to, you will be busy for the majority of the game to kill orcs while Moro player is gonna grow rich and get Nazgul's, you know, Witch King, Catapults, Trolls, and whatever on the field to make your game experience a nightmare. Thanks, guys, for watching. I see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves, and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace, guys.